Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, it's been an interesting one, to say the least. I got beat up over the head by Philly 500 and, of course, Dan Salio. Um, all jokes aside, that's actually just kind of fun. I actually enjoy that quite a bit. Um, but we do have some good news for the Dallas Cowboys, and that is that all of their undrafted rookie free agents are now signed and under contract. And come Friday, um, Friday and Saturday, we have rookie mini camps. So we'll get a chance to actually see our rookies on the field for the first time, which is going to be great to see. Um, I was watching something that maybe is some insight into the situation that's going on with Dak Prescott and his contract. Um, I, I get labeled, you're just a Dak Prescott fan. I will say that whether Dak is here or not, I will be a Cowboy fan. I'm unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, I'm too invested. That doesn't mean that I still won't say, hey, I'm happy that Dak Prescott does well. Just hopefully it's not going with the Giants, the Commanders, or the Eagles, you know. Um, he's an incredible player, and we've lost players before that I've really liked. It's part of the, the, the thing of players, you know, you're not going to keep them forever, especially in this day and age. The fact that we've had them for as many years as we have is actually amazing. But this is the um, – GM for the Baltimore Ravens and they went through a very ugly two-year window of trying to get Lamar Jackson side and here's what he had to say about this whole thing the uh you know the whole Lamar Jackson negotiation that was two very very challenging years I mean in in a lot of ways the biggest challenge I've ever faced professionally was those two years for a lot of different ways very polarizing negotiation and, and and for me difficult because of my affinity for Lamar and how I felt about him as a person but yet I have a responsibility as well to the club and to the Ravens and to Steve Bishotti to do the best deal to negotiate the best deal that I can for the club uh, very hard to do that with a player that you care about that you respect so much but even in this community uh, many many different opinions pro and uh, and against and just the approach and the lack of information which was by design not necessarily talking about the negotiation because Lamar wanted it quiet and I wanted it quiet people have a hard time understanding that and they feel like they have the right to know uh so it was a tough time it was tough on my family uh very tough on my children tough on my wife tough on me tough on my friends tough on my co-workers but we got through it you know it is it's tough I mean <laughs> well I guess it's tougher for him because he's working for the owner as opposed to the Cowboys, the owner and his son being the ones to make the contracts. And the reality is, is it's hard when you're talking about millions of dollars and your future and things like that. And being a football player, understanding that your time in the NFL is very, very short as well. Um, that you need to realize that you have to make the money for the rest of your life because so many players, I mean, there's the, great stories of the Tony Romos and the Troy Aikmans. But the reality is most football players, when they're done with football, may be done in general and not have another career out there. And that's where you see a lot of football players a couple of years after bankrupt. Now, Zay Jones. Now, I messed up. For, I don't know. Why, my wires got crossed. My man, game time is sitting here. You know, Mark Holmes screwed the pooch and everything else. I am not infallible. In fact, I am an idiot. I, as soon as I realized that um, I made a mistake, I misheard. I put it out there that I misheard and I made a mistake. So forgive me. So right now, we don't have any word about Zay Jones signing with the Cowboys or going any other visits. I would actually say... No news may be good news. Now, I'm already getting the trolls out there saying, oh, yeah, man, well, you're just getting that guy who's just mid. You know, that, yes, please sign him. That ain't going to help you any. Well, I will say this much where Zay Jones would definitely be a help because you could have him 
as your outside receiver, and I think you'd be better off having Brandon Cooks being able to play in the slot. And one of the things that I've pointed out many, many times is you you do what you know, which you've done things that have been successful. You want to repeat those. And what Mike McCarthy has done in the past with the Green Bay Packers and that 2010 team, they were 10-6 and six and they won the Super Bowl. People will look and say, well, you had Aaron Rodgers, so of course you won it. Well, the reality was it wasn't just Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers had 31 TDs and 13 interceptions. But what they had was they had three really good tight ends. They had a decent running game, but it was nothing special. Their leading rusher had 731 yards, and they averaged 3.8 yards a carry. 1,600 yards of the season. And they had four receivers that they used. They spread the field out. And you can look at it and say a guy like Zay Jones would be a guy that you'd be able to look through and say, that's an improvement over Michael Gallup. Unfortunately, Michael Gallup, um, the knee injury slowed him down. It seemed like his confidence went after the year that he had coming back maybe too soon. And he never seemed to quite get really in gear to be the guy who, you know, had almost 1,100 yards his second season. He was more of a shell of himself. And it seemed like, for whatever reason, every time we went his way, bad things would end up happening for us. And so for him to move on and getting a Zay Jones, and I'm going to point out to you like I have before, um, Randall Cobb. Um, coming into Dallas. And this is one of those things that when the Cowboys sign people, a lot of times it's like, man, get out of here. That guy's a bum, man. He's washed. Randall Cobb was coming here off of a 435-yard season. Gets here with Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. Gets 835. Signs a $25 million deal with the Texans the next year and gets paid. But was good for our team. And if we get that kind of production, if we can get um, Zay Jones here and he can step up a little bit from where he was, we've improved the wide receiver core completely. And understanding that we still have Jalen Tolbert, who um, you look to get on the field more than he did before, where you hope that he's taking another step as well. So, you know, there's the doom and gloom on the Cowboys and listening to Silly 500 and Dan Salio. I said silly intentionally. And I should say Silly-O because he's Silly-Yo. Um, laugh at the Cowboys. But I'm okay with the Cowboys being underrated. In fact, I'm happy about it because maybe it'll put a chip on their shoulder to make them want to achieve that much more. All right, you good people. As always, I appreciate you guys. And um, we'll see you real soon. Peace out.